I declare the meeting open, <coughs> and I bid you, Ms. Mariana Cifuentes, most heartily welcome. You may now give a brief exposition of your research, of your reasons for having undertaken it, and the result it has, it has yielded. Mr. Rector Magnificus, highly learned opponents, family members, friends, colleagues, many thanks for being in my public defense. This, this afternoon, I present my thesis entitled Negotiating Social Policies in Kenya, Aid, Ethnicity, and Resources Struggles. Since independence, the Kenyan state has had a de facto single party system ruled by a strong president and a small elite drawn largely from one ethnic group. This ruling elite used public resources to develop patron client relations with other ethnic groups, addressing to a certain extent the many inequities existing between ethnic winners and losers. Therefore, the combination of ethnicity and politics have turned the Kenyan state and its institutions as political arenas where competition and social conflict take place. This means that the lines between the state and society, public and private, legal and illegal, and formal and informal are blurred. At the same time, the Kenyan state has had a long history of donor involvement, having to address donor requests such as structural adjustment policies, good governance prescriptions, and other forms of conditionalities in order to benefit from the aid system. So state policies within this context involve a variety of actors that are beyond the core executive. Therefore, in order to understand the state-society relations in Kenya, one also needs to consider the role played by external actors. The thesis considers both these external and internal factors to understand the political events that took place during the first decade of the 21st century, starting in 2003, when the country adopted effective multi-party democracy and increased the resources directed to the social sector, and finalizing in 2010, when not only had inequality persisted, but the country had also witnessed increasing ethnic-based violence. The thesis explores a paradox. How can an increase in resources with the goal of achieving national unity and socioeconomic development actually reinforce an ethnicized political system? As such, the thesis is guided by two research questions. The first discusses the enactment of social policies and aid in the configuration of the contemporary Kenyan state. The second question looks at how ethnicity and local redistribution shape negotiations within the implementation arenas. To answer these questions, the thesis followed a qualitative inquiry to reveal the details of how redistribution and ethnicity affected and are affected by social policy. The methodology was grounded in the assumption that individuals construct so social realities in the form of meanings and interpretations. The aim was to discover these interpretations by studying cases intensively in natural settings and subjecting the resulting data to analytical induction. The analysis followed a constructivist grounded theory approach to understand these empirical worlds. This was not followed on a prescriptive manner but for interpretative understanding. The advantage of this approach was that it presented an, analytical, an, al an analysis of public policies that was empirically grounded, as well as highlighting the context and intervening conditions of the policies identified. I will now explain three aspects that summarize the thesis theoretical framework. First, the thesis is ethnicity as a challenge to state legitimacy, as citizenship combines both e ethnic alliances, where authority rests on non-legal, non-bureaucratic forms of organization and cultural practices, and a national allegiance based on a single political membership, authority, and legitimacy of the nation state. So not only are multiple layers and branches of government institutions present and active to various degrees, 
But ethnic politics add another layer of authority within Kenyan society. So when examined in relation to resource allocation, ethnic politics provide a linkage between power, inclusion and exclusion processes. Also, it's important to recognize the role of ethnic politi politics and to explore the relations between informal and formal realms rather than resorting to cultural stereotypes. Second, with regards to theoretical notions of the state, the thesis defines the African state not as an entity holding or exercising power, but as multiple parallel spaces in which power is encountered and negotiated. As a result, the African state is seen as not having a single interest, but various interests within its different paths. Furthermore, there are a wide range of political institutions and actors. In sum, the thesis considers a plurality of coexisting and completing legitimacies in various situations. Within this framework, policies are understood as interrelated political arenas resulting from negotiations between a variety of actors. Together, these political arenas reveal the complex and ongoing struggles over identities, power and resources involved in making Kenyan statehood. The thesis separates the policy process into two differentiated political arenas. Policy making arenas where donors introduce policy models in exchange for aid, and implementation arenas where bottom up struggles for resources happen together with service provision. These two arenas are not seen as linear, but as political processes with many fractures and contestations. Both arenas happen in parallel while following different values, interests, and worldviews. Domination of these political arenas is never exclusively exerted by one group, but is the result of negotiations between different actor groups. So what emerged from the policy-making arenas? The thesis found that the policy-making arenas entwined donors' interests and the interests of the ruling elite. For example, in the education sector, donors prioritize policies and disbursement mechanisms that channel high levels of aid quickly. The policy ignored the political dynamics of Kenya and was labeled a success without being adequately monitored. Senior government officers, operating as a cartel, innovated to circumvent donor reforms and redirected resources for the ruling elite. As a result, aid linked to the education sector had a dual outcome. Part of the funds were used as a free resource to finance patronage networks of the Kibaki government, while the remaining funds were used to partially fulfill the policy goals. A similar situation took place in the HIV sector. Therefore, the thesis found that donors' poor monitoring and blind eye on corruption were possible because these two policies were means to achieve other goals. As discussed in the thesis, social policies are part of a broader development agenda that complies with geopolitical and ideological demands, such as support for the war on terror and the implementation of neoliberal economic prescriptions. The policy-making arenas preserve unequal power relations between donor and the Kenyan government, but also between the ruling elite and the Kenyan population. In other words, aid contributes to preserve the existing political system. From the implementation arenas, it was found that to understand social policies, it is necessary to consider the relationship between the institutions offering the services and those citizens receiving the services. Initial policy assumptions did not apply to reality, especially because it uh, included notions of homogeneous or altruistic communities and bottom-up accountability processes. For example, the HIV policy was a sign on a flawed understanding of social and political dynamics in the distribution of grants. Community groups were not altruistic, but active political entities. And by using traditional authority structures, community groups form coalitions with the local bureaucracy and the members of, of parliament to benefit from the grant allocation process. 
These coalitions led to the marginalization of the very people the policy was intended to help. Similarly, in the education sector, local actors with power and privilege successfully access resources by developing political coalitions as well as using their own agency. Further, it was found that at the grassroots, the possibility to access resources transformed existing relations. Citizens, government officials, and politicians were constantly redefining the symbols of identity together with transactions of power, prestige, and subsistence. Traditional and institutional authority blurred the lines between the public and the private, knitting together formal and informal institutional practices. These findings show that the contributions of the thesis to the current debate is threefolded. First, the thesis exemplifies how, when linked to politics, ethnicity is fluid and multifaceted. Second, to explain the African state, the thesis builds upon Lund's theory to explain the social sector and why social policies fulfill multiple interests, such as supporting an image of a trustworthy government through expansion in access to education and HIV AIDS services, helping the president to retain power within a highly fractured political coalition, concealing the unequal relations between the Kenyan government and donors as well as within different ethnic groups, and redistributing resources along patrimonial and corrupt routes in addition to formal distribution channels. Lastly, building on Hagman and Peclard's fairly new theoretical approach to the negotiation of African statehood, the thesis extends this framework to include both internal and external actors contesting Kenyan statehood. In this context, both internal and external actors use development, good governance, and ownership rhetoric as tools for domination of the political arenas. Corruption, ethnic biases, and patrimonial relations are also part of the negotiation process. To conclude my presentation, I would like to add that internal and, and external actors are not separate spheres, but parts of a common process of a statehood. It needs to be understood that in Kenya, informal relations also provide legitimacy to the actors and institutions of the state, even if this leads to inferior implementation. Because of these two, this thesis argues that aid is deeply implicated in this faulty redistribution system, rather than being separate from it. Thank you very much. This is the end of the presentation.